comparable. Todd Kern. <laughs> Well, I think it's pretty comparable. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. It's Todd Kearns right here on the road to rock. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. I like your shirt. I like your posters. You know, it's the old mom's basement here. This is actually a digital in effect, which I actually helped Bruce uh, do a couple things too. He was like, how did you do all that stuff with your green screen? I'm like, it's, it's super easy. It's like from the nineties. It's not, it's a nineties effect. So I love it. I think Where we got are him you? squared away. I, I live in Kid you? Kansas city. Oh, Missouri, cool, cool. It's where I'm at, home of the uh, hopefully Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. I know you're Canadian. You're like, I don't care about football, probably. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little <laughs> bit. It's the one thing I'm still struggling with because when I came down here, you know, with the I live in Vegas. So now the Knights are like the biggest deal ever in Las Vegas. We have hockey like yep. followed me, basically. And then, you know, basketball, baseball, I'm sort of hip on all that stuff. I mean, well, we have the Toronto Raptors. We have... Uh, the Blue Jays. So the football is still, although we have Canadian football, which is not that different, but it's different right. enough. But it's still kind of like that kind of thing where like it's the biggest sport in the in the US. And I'm sort of like, I feel a little bit left out a little bit. So I'm trying to kind of get hip to it. I haven't gone to a Raiders game yet because we have them as well. So I yep, see you got the Raiders there. I'm actually heading your way, Todd, tomorrow. For wow. uh, for the Brian Adams residency, I'm not kidding. Ah, I know Brian's playing. Yeah, I'm hitting it That's up. Be great. Um, and unfortunately, no rating the Rock Vault. Uh, while I'm there, I'm just there for the midweek. So you guys, I think are ramp wrapping uh ramping back up here with the Rock Vault coming up here. Uh, on just, the weekend, yeah. On the weekend, this yeah, is, yeah. Which is one of my favorite shows. Uh, that, I mean, I've I've been so many times. Uh, I actually had Robin McCauley on was our last guest, and he said that he did over 1,500 shows. He's the greatest. Guys. Robin's wow. the greatest. Yeah, he's really, truly the greatest. He's still, you know, um, still at the top of his game. I mean, it's really impressive to to watch Robin do his thing. Absolutely. And it's a great show. And I hope anybody that's uh, out in Vegas can hit up the Rio, check it out, because it's it's a, a truly amazing show. And, um, you know, Sir Harry Cowell, he knows what set list to get people in there and to make it good. So you, you I don't know if you've sang, I, you know, a lot of these songs 1,500 times like Robin. But no. Got to be getting up there. <laughs> it's it's definitely up there. But, you know, Robin had been there for probably 10 years or something, or eight years at least. So for me, it's just kind of like I always kind of feel this weird sense of just filling in. Like I, I honestly never sort of joined. I was just sort of like, "Are you available?" Kind of like, "Yeah, I'm not doing anything. Yeah, cool, come down and play." And then like you know, then I go off and do you know stuff, and then I come back and like, "Yeah, sure, I'll come down and play." And um, you know, I just love those guys so much. It's a lot of you know, for those that don't know, there's guys from Heart, there's guys from White Snake, and guys from Dio, and all these different bands, and you know, guys Blas Elias from Slaughter on the drums, who's you know, I saw in a hockey arena in 1991 or something <laughs> like that. So yeah, it was like that surreal kind of thing of like, you know, guys that I watched on MTV are now like, you know, playing on stage with them. You know, it's it's a surreal thing. Well, it's great. I mean, you're you're someone that you're just you're everywhere. You're doing a lot of stuff. I mean, I kind of want to start with this because I, I I got do have this the Bruce Kulick shirt on because um not this New Year's, which was another uh, kind of a VIP experience that you guys did, but the year before with with Eric Singer filling in for Brent Fitz there um, mm -hmm. at Counts Vamped, I was there, which to this day, Todd, my girlfriend and I talk about it being one, just one of the most fun, intimate, memorable nights that we've ever had. We go to, you know, 50 shows a year. That that show and what you guys do with Zach Throne, uh, with Bruce, those Kiss songs, I mean, they really live through you guys, the, those uh, those 80s songs, man. And they, they just every time you see you, whether it be on a cruise or at a show, man, it is top notch. You guys do a tremendous job with that stuff. Oh, well, thank you so much. I mean, honestly, it's it's so surreal to me because when we first did it with Bob, we did it with Bob Kulik before he passed, Bob and Bruce. Yeah. And, and it was such a like, yeah, sounds like fun. I No one foresaw it being an ongoing you know, sort of pseudo yearly um, celebration of that music. But I will be honest, a lot of people from Eddie Trunk and Chris Jericho and all these guys that I know, their their favorite kiss is sort of non-makeup kiss in a way. Like they kind of, I, I was, although I'm the same age as those guys, I think I was like sort of, I had dug into makeup kiss, you know, with with fervor, you yeah. know, as a, as, a, as a youngster in the single digits going like, you know, just loving that band. So, and then sort of experiencing the whole thing in real time so that we went into the non-makeup kiss. But by the time I was old enough to go see them live, Bruce was the guitar player, you know? So it's kind of like, that was my kiss yeah. in, in a very different way, you know, in the same way that all those people that, I, that I'm talking about 
when we play the Kiss Cruiser, we play um, you know, an event like that Vamp gig or in Indianapolis or Nashville. We've done many different things. Um, you're talking about an audience that, well, not only not only is a, a follower of non-makeup Kiss, but is also a Kiss fan that doesn't necessarily need to hear Shout It Out Loud and Rock and Roll All Night and Detroit Rock City anymore. They want to hear, you know, we're doing King of Hearts and The Oath and, you know, and turn on the just, night, turn on the night and just <laughs> digging like super deep. And, and I, I kept thinking to myself, well, I'm a Kiss fan. And I'm like, you know, I would think to myself, is this, are we going, are we swinging from the fences here? Or is this getting too wild? And I'd be like, there's no such thing. We did Time Traveler, you know, an old um, demo. We've done Sword and Stone, an old demo. We've done stuff from Killers, you know, which is really, really lost gold that people love, you know, when you do Nowhere to Run or we haven't done I'm a Legend tonight that we keep talking. It's on the list. Um so a lot of that kind of stuff. I mean, we did Exciter from 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 Lick It Up one time, and that was sort of, you know, Bruce initially was sort of like wanted to be playing songs that he was involved in, of course, or his connection to the to the songs. But we just sort of went like Exciter would be a cool one to open with because we'd opened with, you know, uh, King of the Mountain. We'd opened with uh, I've Had Enough. We'd opened with a lot of like very cool stuff to open with that we decided to let's try and find another opener. I think Exciter from the Lick It Up is, would be huge, and it and it was huge, yeah. Have you guys thought about? Uh, and I've asked Bruce this, and it's but it's been a, a year or so since we've had him on. I mean, about doing kind of a more long range tour with something like this, doing like a, a U.S. shot of you know ten fifteen shows, anything like that. Is that possible? It, it it gets tossed around. I mean, it's always sort of to me, it's always a, a very distinct possibility. It's just a matter of figuring out um, how that would all work, you know. And it's, and again, you've got like. Like currently, Brent Brent's out with Lita Ford. Um, Zach's in the studio with Corey Taylor. I'm, I don't know. I think Bruce is probably doing gr gr Grand Funk, and I just came yep. home from a I just came home from a run with Steven Adler. So, talking about a bunch of guys who are doing a lot of other stuff. So, um, if we could, if if it came up, I think we would all be very gung ho. Yeah, I'd be like, let's do it. That'd be fun. It's crazy because so many people know you from Slashing the Conspirators as the bass player from Slashing the Conspirators. You do a tremendous job. You guys have been a cohesive unit, done uh, so much over the last 10 years together. But you're getting to, seems like you're getting to to sing more, whether it be live. You're, they're showcasing your voice a lot. They're like, that Todd Kearns guy, like, what a voice. And now, oh, that's nice. with that, and now, and we'll talk about Gods and Monsters, but um what do you, when you get these opportunities, do you feel, I mean, get, cause I mean, Miles Kennedy, who I, you know, learned about just when I was in high school and saw the movie Rockstar, and I was like, that's, that guy's awesome. And cause the <laughs> bridge and <laughs> yeah, it's really, that story sounded cooler in my head, but, um, you yeah, getting yeah. these opportunities and people are really starting to, you know, recognize you now as, as a singer with rock vault and all the things that you do. I mean, that, how, how does that kind of feel for you? Well, it's very interesting to me. Cause I, I, I you know, I've been, fronting and writing my own music for so long that when i came to vegas i had sort of taken on the attitude of like look you know i i'm just going to see what happens if i just sort of lean into all my other abilities which were you know as an instrumentalist and all that kind of stuff became kind of the slash thing was sort of you know to be honest i don't know if it, if it hadn't been slash if i would have just taken a straight up bass gig because at that time I was still singing and doing my own stuff and doing my own thing. But the fact that it was Slash was sort of like, you know, the kind of like, yeah, that sounds like something that I could kind of find myself, you know, taking a bit of a backseat to. Plus, you're taking the backseat to Miles, which is, you know, is hardly a backseat. It's a it's a pleasure to ride along with him. And and they've been so good to me. And Miles has been so good to me as far as like, you know, um, I mean, to keep in mind, there was really no intent from the beginning that this was still going to be talking. Be, we'll be talking about it 13 years later. It's sort sure. of, you know, it was kind of like we're just going to go out and do a record supporting or a tour supporting. Um, supporting the solo album that he had put out. And then, um, you know, in the time that we did that, then it turned into, hey, would you sing the, the song that Lemmy sang? Will you sing the song that Iggy Pop sang? Because they didn't really feel like they were in Miles's wheelhouse. And I was like, sure. Yeah, you know, and then it turned into, you know, as we were doing that, the conversation turned into recording Apocalyptic Love for the 2012 release, in which case it became sort of, you know, you know, then it really started to kind of play with what would kind of go on to become the sound of the band, really. And, and you know, I, I think that the interplay between Miles and I vocally, although Miles is very much the lead vocalist, there's a lot of 
stuff going on with um, the harmonies and the, and the mm. backup vocals that sort of fell largely in my lap and, and then eventually completely in my lap. You know what I mean? Like eventually, you know, I, I Miles was just singing his lead vocals and he would just, okay, knock yourself out and he would leave, you know? So as the, as the records went along. So, so now here we are, you know, four records later and 13 years of playing together later um, uh, to suddenly have somebody, you know, as I was going along for it to be, do you mind, do you know any, uh, do you know out to get me or you're crazy? And I'd be like, yes, you know, <laughs> yes, gotta, yes. I just kind of know those songs and it'd be like, okay. And we would just play it that night. So that sort of started to turn, you know, welcome to the jungle would come up sometimes just, just, you know, randomly singing songs. And then, um, the Bruce connection had been made long before Slash. So we we had played together back in in 2010. Just before we started playing with Slash, we we had done a BK3 record release party. So the fact that I was singing those songs back then, or some of them, um, just became kind of like when Bruce was ready to do it again, it was like, hey, you guys want to do this? So it was like, yeah, okay. So although it seems like a strange, you know, uh, I, I totally understand the fact that people don't fully associate you know me as a lead vocalist in that sense in that international sense of course you know where i come from in canada i'm known as that and, yeah and uh and a lot of that but you know it's it's i kind of feel like i have the ability to do a bunch of things i could play guitar over here i could play bass over here i could sing over here i could sing and play guitar they could sing and play bass here and it's like and it sort of creates a world where i can do i can take a lot of phone calls so it's like do you want to play bass on this can do you want to play guitar? Do you want to sing? Do you want to, you know, that kind of stuff? It's like if I was only one of those things, I would have one third the work, I guess. <laughs> well, Todd, that kind of to, to that point, I mean, have you ever had any offers um to to kind of that maybe no one knows about to to kind of be like a hired gun? Because there's so many people in the rock genre that you know, that wind up that you're just like, oh my God, there's Jason Hook playing guitar for Mandy Moore, or there's there's a lot of these examples out there, and like I, you know, I'm just saying. You're, you got the look, you got the hair, you're a good looking guy, you got the tattoos and you're tall. You would stand out on stage with any, you know, pop or rock, you know, person of today, Demi Lovato, who's, you know, playing with Anita yeah. Strauss now. But have you yeah, ever I had know, any yeah. kind of crazy artists, uh, offers like that from someone? Not so much. I, I mean, I've gotten offers over the years, but usually in, in the rock vein, um, that kind of stuff doesn't really present itself, but I'm not sort of... Um, I will say, actually, I think the height thing is actually kind of a deterrent for some really? people. It's like, yeah, like maybe a, for a Bruce friend, Dickinson, it would be. I don't know. <laughs> a friend of mine, a friend of mine plays with. Uh, I just had dinner with him last night. He plays with Avril Lavigne, and I go, "See, I couldn't play with someone like that. She would look like a dwarf, you know, like I look like Shaquille O'Neal or something compared That's to true. people." Like, you know? So it, it just kind of like, although I've never really, I've never really felt like, oh, I'm missing out on this or I'm missing out on that. I, I, I have no complaints about the way my career has gone. So, um, you know, if the right thing came my way, I might consider something like that, but that kind of stuff hasn't presented itself too much for me, but, uh, um, you never know. It's never too late. Is it? Yeah, certainly not. I mean, you're, you're one of the young guys in the rock game. I mean, think about it. How's that? How is that? You're, you know, not, I'm not giving out anyone's ages. Everybody, at least 90% of our listeners have Wikipedia. You're, you're, <laughs> you're like one of the young guys in a lot of the, these situations here. Well, I, I honestly, I don't know about that. I think that it's, it's an interesting time to, you know, in real time witnessing our heroes get old. You know what I mean? And that's, yes. Um, that said, I think that, you know, if I can keep doing this for the next 30, 40 years and get to their age, then yeah, I guess I'm sort of lucky enough to be able to hmm. do this. Actually more like, I, mean, I guess 30 years, let's say that <laughs> 40 years would be, <laughs> I, I shouldn't be doing this anymore. Please don't let me, I mean, make, let me ever know advancements. We, we can't rule it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. With like, uh, you know, the right vitamins and maybe the right, right diet, I guess you just keep going and going. Um, yeah, it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing. I mean, we, you know, we, we look at the world uh, of rock and roll to be a young man's game and that's not necessarily untrue, but I think that there's something to be said about all the, all the music that we all love that we grew up on. Um, those guys are all, you know, a lot of them are senior citizen age, um, and they're still kicking ass. So I think, I think that says something, but, um, 
you know, I, I, I really have a very sort of blue collar attitude about what I do. It's sort of like, mm. you know, I wake up in the morning and I like, like right now, it's like I'm getting ready for the Heroes and Monsters tour and I wake up every day, I go over the set, you know, I make coffee and then I go over the set and, you know, all that kind of stuff, get ready for it. And, and um, you know, I just sort of very much prepare for the next run of, uh, run, run of dates and um, go and do Rock Vault and I head up to Canada for two, two Tuke shows and I'm off to Italy with Heroes and Monsters and then I'm back back here probably doing rock vault i guess it's um you know i don't really i feel very fortunate that like if if my 14 year old self could have seen that this was my life mm -hmm. he would have been very pleased i mean as much as there's times where at certain points in my life you know you might feel like oh i didn't have a i don't have a granny or you know blah blah, blah. And, you, and you realize later on that none of that stuff really there's i mean people complain about the grammys or something like that there's no rock and roll on there i go dude when i was a kid all i wanted to ever do was watch kiss and iggy pop and the ramones and, and those bands weren't on the grammys <laughs> I got that. So, so, yeah. so i think you know we're all in good company absolutely um well, we got to talk about gods and monsters you're heading of course uh to italy here in just a few weeks i think to to get that uh tour going there in february in italy heroes and monsters you know you want to talk about just some hooky in your face rock and roll straight out of probably the 1970s you can hear the influences it's crunchy you got the sweet maybe some zeppelin in there i am just uh really digging this of course uh the last video that you guys just put out a few days ago was uh, break me i'm yours which is right exactly falling in that vein that i'm talking about very crunchy very hooky todd this uh this heroes and monsters things the real deal you want to talk about some uh high caliber musicians i mean my gosh um in this band you have not only yourself but just to think about who else, who else you're playing with? I mean, Will Hunt, currently in, in Evanescence. And then not only that, but Steph Burns, who's played from everyone from Sheila E to Huey Lewis and Alice Cooper. This is this is a holy triumvirate, dare I say the term, Todd Kearns. This is what a, what a, what a band this is. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I mean, honestly, it started literally in the middle of the lockdown. Um, you know, the conversation started. Um, Will calls. I'm literally in this room like sitting here right now and just hello. And, <laughs> and then like, you know, we start talking about like, Hey, we're doing this thing. Would you be interested in getting involved? And I'm literally watching tiger King and not doing anything, you know? So it was kind of <laughs> like, I was like, yeah, sure. Let's, you know, let's knock some ideas around. And then, you know, it turns into the record that's out, you know, it's, it's fascinating to consider that, that that's how that works. I mean, um, uh, I, I had not met Steph in person before a lot of this, you know, but yeah. not like not, not a lot, of, never in person until we made the videos for raw power and let's ride it. I mean, we hadn't really had the opportunity. I mean, it was, I, I hadn't seen Will Hunt in two years because it had been, you know, we weren't allowed to see anybody. You know, right. <laughs> other than my long suffering wife. But, uh, you know, other than that, it was just sort of, <laughs> other than that, it was just sort of like, you know, well, it's just, if it's, you know, I think, like anything, if, if it had not turned out great or if we had not been happy with the way it turned out, we would have just left it to rot or let it let it go away. But then we kept digging it and kept, you know, kept going and kept going. And 10 songs later, it was like, yeah, let's do this. How did Frontiers get involved? Did they come to you guys first? I mean, you want to talk about a record label that just, to me, so perfectly fits puzzle pieces together to create amazing melodic rock albums, whether it be veteran bands, whether it be super groups, whether it be uh, new and upcoming bands from overseas. Frontiers to me is the key in really helping keep hard rock, album-oriented rock alive with this new music. So when did they kind of get involved with you guys? Yeah, they are very, very good at kind of, you know, gathering up like, you know, this sort of all-star teams to yeah. go out and, and crush. Um, we had sort of gathered ourselves. I think right. that there may have been some talk about um the, their connection to frontiers and having some sort of uh uh you know connection there so i think that you know for us it was just kind of a case of like let's just make music and not worry too much about because we don't make quite the same kind of um you know uh sort of melodic metal type stuff um but it is very rock you know and i think that there's still a market for what we do within the frontiers um audience you know what i mean so uh, yeah, I, I think it was just kind of, uh, it was nice to have somebody with a, with a plan that, that if you make this music, you can actually get out and be, be places. You know what I mean? Well, the album's just been out for a few days now. It was released January 20th via Frontiers. 
what's been the feedback so far? What have you, what have you been hearing kind of online and, or do you just kind of block all that stuff out? No, I mean, honestly, it's, you know, uh, I don't seek it out. I'm not the kind of person that goes out and goes like, please tell me how wonderful I am, you know, or, or the opposite, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I just sort of, you know, uh, you know, I, it just sort of comes at you and people seem to be enjoying it. And, I, and I, that's all that matters to me. You know, it's kind of like we live in a day and age where, you know, the heroes, um, that I grew up with aren't making a lot of music. Um, Kiss and Aerosmith and bands like that don't really, I mean, Cheap Trick does. Um, Alice happy, has. Happy birthday, know. Robin Zander. He turned 70 today. Wow. There you go. Wow. wow 70. That's, that's great. Yeah. Um, and still sings his ass off. Yes. Um, um, yeah. It's the kind of thing where, you know, I, the industry in, of it, in and of itself, you know, it, it can get really bogged down in a conversation about like, is there really any need to make new music anymore? Shouldn't we just go on the road and play, release singles once in a while, as you've seen? Yeah, you know, Guns has done that, and yeah. everybody's been doing that, just releasing singles. And when I talked to Slash about it, like we released SMKC four back at you know almost a year ago now. Um, you know, the idea of still gathering up 10, 12 songs and getting some artwork together and making a record to us seems that's what we grew up with. That's what we want to do until someone tells us differently we'll just keep doing that so with something like heroes and monsters is very much the same mentality of like well let's just keep doing what we do i mean we we're lucky enough to be able to keep making music and and feeling creative and feeling good let's just do that and see where where it takes us basically you know what i mean well i gotta be honest i gotta submit my coverage uh to frontiers on this and uh they give you like a, a five or six hundred word limit on, on my review. So I got to really be like mince my words. You know, I'm a wordy person. I write, I write all the time, sports articles, all this stuff. So how am I supposed to sum up this album in 600 words when I want to just take it to the moon? Cause I'm telling you, this is great. And the artwork is great. Is that you well, standing I out there that. in the cornfield? Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's not me. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no oh. it's, uh, I really appreciate that. It's, it's, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, I, I don't know. It's such an interesting thing because I've been in so many different you know, in so many different records that I've had to make in my life, I've had so many different, you know, like where you're very much started trying to play the game and get your stuff on the radio and that, 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 that. Now in the 21st century, it feels like, you know, you, it's kind of the wild west again, like just yeah. make good, just make music that you like, feel that you feel good about. And hopefully it'll find an audience and um, go from there. Really. I mean, honestly, it's like, I don't know that, you know, you know, we all know that the record industry in and of itself is challenging. You know, I mean, the idea of releasing and selling music has become, you know, it's it's that's not where the everybody's out on the road. And there's a reason why the Stones are on the road, not making records. You know, is that's yeah. where the money is. I mean, and everybody knows that. So, um, but I still think that as long as there's, you know, as still as, as long as there's some gas in the tank, I'm going to keep trying to write songs and and put them out. You know, until until I just can't anymore, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Definitely continue to do that. And the reviews have been phenomenal that I've seen just re reading uh, some Amazon reviews, lots of five stars. Um, oh, that's I think great. People are really digging this. And I think that's just tremendous to be able to, to keep putting out this, uh, this level of material. And I, you know, give uh, the band and frontiers a lot of credit. It's a great uh, marriage here and hopefully uh, we can see some more. So, and hopefully maybe we see this. I know, is it uh, Steph that uh, lives in Italy? So we it may mm -hmm. be a while before we get this in the States. We may not see this for a while, Todd. Well, he is American, though. He's from the Bay yes. Area. So there's a, <laughs> there's a good chance. Uh, there's a good chance. I mean, a lot of the, what, we're, what we're contending with is, you know, mostly scheduling. Scheduling, I mean, I, yeah. I deal with that in, in, in SMKC. I deal with that in Took. I deal with all the different products. Bruce Kulik, you know, we were just talking about that. It's sort of like everybody, the days of everybody having, you know, imagining being, 23 and putting Aerosmith together and still be playing in Aerosmith at 73 is, you know, that would be gl glorious in a lot of ways, but that's not the way things worked out for me. So now it's kind of like the, the good and the bad of it is having a lot of things on your sure. plate and a lot of, um, uh, and, and for me, it's all good. I, I, I really enjoy all these things that I get to do. And, and I find, you know, the moments that we're doing Bruce, it's, you know, it's all about that. And then, uh, took, and then, uh, you know, rock vault's a lot more of a casual thing for me in that I can, you know, being home, 
getting to, you know, I'm not saying casual and that I only phone well, it in. It's like, it's no, like a I, night I, out though. It's like a fun night yeah. out. It's great to go and play with your friends and, 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 and rock with your friends and then go sleep in your own bed. Yeah. No <laughs> one can really, no one can really put to, uh, to find a point on that. So, um, but yeah, everything, everything kind of has its place and it's all really enjoyable and really rewarding for me in its own way. So I, I'm just, I feel very fortunate. Well, Todd, it's been such a pleasure having you on and it was cool meeting you. I actually met uh, you and uh, Eric and Bruce and Zach at the, uh, the show, you know, before the show, right after sound check, which was awesome to see you guys do that sound check. And then the show, it's very memorable and just, um, very hopeful that I can uh, do that again sometime, maybe next new year's before we let you go, Todd, final four drum roll. It's four quick questions and you give oh, us gosh. whatever comes okay. to mind. We'll have fun. Okay. Um, what's your favorite restaurant in Vegas? And I will eat there while I'm there. Well, Chef Kenny's. Okay. It's an, it's an Asian fusion vegan place. So I'm really, I'm really throwing it at you. What are you but getting does, me into here, Todd? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I might freak you out, but it's like, <laughs> he's, he's like this really revolutionary okay. cat that does some really crazy stuff. And every person I've sent there, vegan or otherwise, has been like, dude, that was like the greatest experience I've ever had. I go, yeah, it's the best. There's, he's got a, he's got a dim sum place and he's got an Asian place up on Sahara. It's the greatest. Perfect. I love, I love recommendations like that. Um, song that you're maybe most looking forward to dusting off uh, to play with Bruce Kulick. You talked about a few from the killers album. What's, what's maybe one that you're really wanting to. You know, champion? it's one I've, I've been trying to get, um, well, uh, it was mostly Bruce, but it, you know, just it's the giant amount of music that we have to look at that sometimes things get lost, but not for the innocent from Lick It Up has been on my list for a long time. That's a doozy. It's a Gene Simmons song and, and it's just crushes, I think. Gene had so few 80s moments that, that stood out like that. That is definitely one of them. That would be great. Um, totally. I, can't, I can't remember which one because we had Bruce on right before the show last year and I can't remember which one that I said had to be played, but I'm assuming the whole set list had to get, had to get uh, mixed, you know, redone after Brent went yeah. down with the, yeah, all, quite with a, the COVID. So quite a lot of it had to be changed. Yeah. We had, we had never played. I love it loud before in, in that yep. incarnation, but having Eric, spit, there sort you of, guys did spit that night. Spit we spit. We do. Done. I mean, we, we, we've done revenge in its entirety uh, many times. Okay. So, um, that's kind of, you know, we're getting to a point now where we're probably finding less songs that we've, you know, yeah. that we haven't played. That's why you try to have to like dig up demos and stuff. Okay. Question three. Now I feel like in a lot of ways, you and Chris Jericho are like the same person. Like he has all, he, he, he grew up in Winnipeg. He's got a lot of, you know, the guys are like the same age, same kind of stories. A lot of times when it comes to uh, concerts growing up. So what was your first concert a major rock concert like you talked about going to the hockey arena so what was your first one that you remember well the first major one was you know for me anyway was lover boy um with brian adams opening um it was you know i lived in a small town um i'd grown up in a very small town very far north and then when we moved south and we were closer to the city then it was kind of like you know an hour an hour and 10 minute drive into the city so it was kind of like we could then I suddenly that opened up everything. It was yeah. sort of like, you know, I love her boy. Brian Adams one is the most Canadian experience that anybody could ever have. And then then it was just, you know, everything. Kiss, Judas Priest, you know, all that stuff started to kind of happen. And what arena was this that you were going to? I saw it at the Centennial Auditorium in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. So and I played there, which is so funny. Like to end up playing there years later with Slash, I would be like, I I sat right about there at my very first concert, you know, at Soundcheck. I'm like pointing down somewhere around the first three rows. I go somewhere in there. I saw, you know, and I've, I've been lucky enough to do that on a few occasions where I've played venues that I saw a lot of shows, you know. Um, so with Rating the Rock Vault, do you have one song in particular that you sing that, you know, night in and night out, you're going to go out there and it's going to just light the audience up and that you really look forward to that moment? Um. Well, quite a few actually, but um, what's really surprising, not even surprising at all, actually, is that they, you know, I don't consider myself a journey, um, like a Steve Perry type singer, you know what I mean? So I, I, I have such great respect for Steve um, that I go, I, I don't know if I, if I could sing this song. I don't know if I really have that voice, but um, they, they've been very good to me that way. So whenever you, whenever I go out and sing, separate ways because i was i was you know i grew up on rock and punk rock and 
that kind of stuff. And Journey was always that kind of thing. He always, it, it, Journey was always like a really nice, slick car. <laughs> you know, you're always kind of like, <laughs> it's like, that's sure a nice car, but it's just kind of not for me. You know, you're just kind of like, I, it's, I really get it. I really respect it. I really, I think it's awesome. Um, and then, so I just didn't really have that kind of investment in it, but going out there and singing separate ways every night, I just watch everybody freak out. It's the funniest thing. I'm just kind of like, wow, I didn't know this. But anyway, it's kind of ignorant to think that people don't love these kind of majorly classic songs. But for some reason, that song just crushes every single night. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Todd, it's been just a true pleasure. Can't believe it's taken this long. We'll have to do it again soon, my friend. Um, you just can't wait. To, I'm sure I'll see you soon out there in the, I, I, I mean, you went to lover boy and Brian Adams. You could just show up to Brian Adams again. He's going to be in Vegas. Just I'd put love that out to, there. <laughs> I, 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 it's on my list. I'm trying to, I've got so many things on my plate now that I'm getting ready to go and start this sure. run of dates and all that kind of stuff. But, um, if I can make it work, I definitely will. Thank you so much, Todd, uh, gods and monsters. It is out there right now. The album came out just uh the other day so check it out it is uh i I said gods and monsters didn't i i think so heroes and Uh, monsters yeah heroes and monsters uh (laughs) we are cut our producer will be cutting that part out it's okay nobody will have to attack me todd thank you so much my friend it's always a pleasure appreciate it you too brother take care have a great day you bet thank you bye-bye